Hello everyone. So, for a few years now I've been using some sort of game boosting program. Simply because I don't have a computer that's powerful enough to play a video game without one. I, you know, nowadays they're just too expensive. But, I was talking to one of my regular customers at work a few hours ago before I got off my shift and he was saying he had a few issues that his desktop was so showing some age. So I turned him on to what is now called Razer Cortex, formerly known as Razer Game Booster. Of course you can download both, but eh. I told him that having a game boosting program would help a ton. And I know this from experience. I used to have a 2009 Toshiba satellite laptop that I used to play video games on and while I didn't get the best frame rate ever I could still play any game just about on the lowest of low settings which is fine with me because I'm not exactly a graphics person so I usually turn them down anyway when I was in middle school I'd say about eight nine years ago there was, uh, probably even ten years ago, actually, there was, uh, you know, with Walmart selling desktops, my cousin got me into a game called World of Warcraft. Yes, everybody knows about that game. Problem was, I could never play it correctly. As it, I like to think that all video games are meant to be played at the highest of settings. I just really don't care. But while I didn't have the greatest frame rate or the best graphics I'd ever seen on a you know, piece of crap desktop, well I wouldn't call them pieces of crap because they do do uh, basic functions. So, heh, <laughs> doo doo. Uh, it, Walmart PCs or any computer from a super center or outlet like that aren't built for gaming. We all know this. And you can't exactly take a Walmart PC and throw in a decent graphics card. Because that just won't work. Why would it? Typically, if you want, if you want your gaming PC, you will build it. But you'd better have the money for it. So I got an online a few years ago and started looking into ways I can improve my gameplay. As it stood, when I had my Toshiba satellite, I, World of Warcraft was impossible to play. Completely impossible. I would maybe get a few steps and then the game would just auto-close. It would force quit itself. It would suicide. And I'm usually a tech-savvy person and being able to do the maintenance on your own computers is a good thing. But what I was doing wasn't helping. So, as always, I went to Google. And I looked into some things, and I found something that I liked. Well, I didn't know I liked it at the time, but now I do. It's from a company called Iobit, or Eobit. I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry. If anybody from IOBit or EOBit's listening, I apologize if I pronounce it wrong. Uh, now keep in mind, I don't have... You know, I, version 3.4 is the most recent one from IOBit. I had one a few versions earlier. I think it was 1.8, 1.9 when I started using it. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It would... When you downloaded it and started it up, it would scan your computer for your video games and they would almost always all be here. If not, you could add them. Then you could click it and then boost it and launch it. Now boosting, what it would do is it would close out all processes not necessary for video games, but keep the processes that were necessary running. This worked for a time. Once Game Booster got to version 3.4, which is the 
absolute last version of it, a company called Razer, the same company that does the headsets and the mice and the head and the keyboards, decided to acquire it. So they made their own. The the typical the thing that Game Booster, Razer Game Booster, and Razer all, Razer Cortex, the thing all three of them have in common is they have a game box. You can do stuff like diagnose your system, key parts that may affect gaming performance, consequent blah blah blah. And they had tools like tweaking, defragging, and the drivers that you would probably need to download because if you're like me, you don't really download drivers and keep them updated. So Razer, as you can see here on my taskbar, I have all three of them pinned simply for this video. The old IOBit Game Booster icon was this. Razer decked it out in Razer colors and Im you know, improved the icon, I guess. I don't, I don't know. And then they released it. No. Uh, and then you would have the same thing. You would have your game box right here. It would make that stupid noise that you're probably hearing right now. If not, then download Razer Game Booster and just do this. It's annoying as shit. Razer added a search function. As you can see, I don't have... I have more video games over here. And World of Warcraft's on that other screen. So... There we go. A little bit of a pain in the ass, yes, but you could still add the video games you didn't see, and you could refresh it just in case the initial scan might have missed it. As far as utility goes... Utilities... You still had the boost, the diagnose, the tweak, defrag drivers. But Razer added FPS. And you could choose where you wanted your FPS display to go in four locations, as you can see on my screen right here. You can also just turn it off, or you can display it and hide it with a keybind. Later on in Razer Game Booster's life, they added sync save games. What this would do is, you for games that would have a local save file, such as uh, Elder, the Elder Scrolls games like Oblivion, Morrowind, Skyrim, etc., etc., games like that, you could actually sync them to Dropbox. That way, in case anything happened, you had your save files. Then Razer added a screencast option. In addition to a couple of the other things they added and changed when they acquired the Game Booster program from IOBit. In this Razer Game Booster, you could take screenshots of your most epic moments. Or you could say to hell with it all and don't even bother. You could set up as a keybind, set your save location, and choose the format as either bitmap, PNG, or a JPEG. You could also record videos of your epic moments, because, you know, sometimes a screenshot doesn't tell it all. You could turn it off, set the keybind, set the save location, your video resolution you could choose between a quarter to full. Obviously full would use a lot more resources than a quarter, and you could choose the video quality from lowest to highest, lowest obviously using the smallest amounts of resources compared to highest, and you could select your microphone input that you would hear over your recordings. And they would have all your recordings here uh, that you could see you know, everything you've recorded. They would see it right here. And you could preview them in Game Booster. Huh. <laughs> You could, you know, you know, you could watch them here, and that lag I had back then was pretty bad. But then Razer decided to change Razer Game Booster again to Game Booster. They released a program called Razer Cortex. Now I don't know if this is available to everyone now. because I remember getting an email saying, you know, don't release this kind of information, and they'll probably remove this video if they're still, you know, if they still enforce that. 
but Razer Cortex came about. As with Razer Game Booster, when you started it up, it would scan. Now one thing you can notice between Cortex and game, Razer's Game Booster is the game box will hold more games on one little area without having to really move up or down or side to side or whatever. So that was good. They still kept the functions they had in Game Booster like search and add and refresh just in case the scan missed a game. You could still do screenshots and record video. You could still boost and all of that from Razer Game Booster. But Razer added a thing called deals. Now in this you can see the deals from a lot of places, including Steam. Uh, wait, what was that? No, that's not it. No, that's not what I was looking for. What are you? What are you doing? Oh, never mind. You, know, you would have. You could tell the deals for were, which deals were from Steam because of this you know, typical Steam trademark. But you would even see Steam Origin. Okay, well it was also it was on Origin. That's my bad. But it updates periodically with deals, and it has usually has more than just Steam as the mirror that you could download it from, like Humble Bundle, Amazon, Gamers Gate, and that's cool. I mean, it's all right, but I don't see a need to use it. It'll also tell you when an offer ends. An offer offer ends for Watch Dogs at $35.99 in 6 hours 38 minutes. Now, they're just going to be shit out of luck because I can't afford it. Uh, my main point of the video is if you have a computer that's not exactly gaming oriented, a lot of times you don't really need to go out and spend money on a gaming rig. You don't have to spend money to build one. You don't have to spend money to buy a pre-built one. In my case, a game booster fixed my problems. Of course, I no longer use that Toshiba satellite since I got an Asus, but you know, I still use the game booster programs. They are immensely helpful, and that's what I told my customer earlier. The Game Booster programs will stop all unneeded processes running, but keep the ones that need to run, running. And from personal experience, I have seen a massive improvement in frame rates with and without Game Booster on, or Cortex on, I should say, because Cortex is the one I use. I just downloaded Razer Game Booster and IOBits Game Booster because of the for the purposes of this video. And I probably should have written a script for this video too and read it off, but oh well. Game booster programs are an immense help. If you just have small f FPS issues, give a game booster program a try. You'll probably see an improvement. Might not be my mu by much, but it'll be an improvement. So, thanks a lot for watching this video. Um, you know, if you have a friend or know someone who ha who's starting to have issues with their video games, you know, with a drop in FPS or whatever, point them to this video or at least tell them about Game, Bo Game Booster programs. I'm sure they'd appreciate it.